Welcome to the next lecture of our course Selenium with Java and we have been talking about developing Selenium code from Java basic to advanced and so far we have just talked about the core Java concept and in this session we are going to talk about working with methods and I promised in our last lecture that um, we are going to be talking about the methods in a much much detailed fashion because we have worked with method quite a lot until this point but we have really not talked about the nitty-gritty details of methods as such so that's what we are going to be doing in this particular lecture so what is this methods as a whole you already know that right method was doing certain operation very specific to that particular functionality that you're doing for uh, so that's exactly what method is method is a block of code that perform certain specific task or operation uh, that you are expecting to happen for instance in our last lecture we saw uh, in the web driver class we wrote this open method uh, and this method actually has got a, a string parameter uh, and uh, it also has got certain things over here so let's break down this entire things over here so you can see that this public is basically an access modifier you know that quite well so if i make any method as private guess what is going to happen you can't access that right so you can't access that from outside of that particular class file not inside that class file inside that class file you can still access that method but from out outside that class file you can't access it if it is a private access modifier so every method will have a access modifier by itself number one and then we also saw that a method can also have a static or a um, a non-static a keyword there so you see that we saw that a method like this one like my child method was a uh, instance method like without a static method you can access access this particular method using its uh, instance object of a class file whereas you can access a class file without having an instance uh, object by using the static keyword you remember that's what we saw so you can uh, create a method with a, with a static method as well and uh, you can access this method from the class name dot and then the method name that's how you can access it that's how you can do the static which is this one and you also see that a method will also have what is called as a return type so you see that all the days so far we have written the code is with out a return type it's like a void type so void here says that it's a no return value from this particular method but what if you wanted to return some value out from a method so how do you do that and that's when you can use the primitive types like string types uh, int type double or float or string or byte or short whatever it is and you also can use a non-primitive types like string or arrays or classes the interface you can do that as well as a return type which is quite cool and moving forward we'll also be talking about what is called as collection framework you can also return a collection of value like an array list or dictionary or hash map or uh, those things we can do it uh, like a return value as well from a method so those things is also possible i'm just giving a heads up before even we go to the collection framework but collection framework is yet another most important concept before we get into automation testing so we, we are going to learn about that as well but at least you you have got the idea uh, like how this entire things are going to happen so that's what this one right so this is all about the return types of a method uh, and finally a method can also have multiple parameters so basically you can see that a method not only restricted to just one parameter that we have passed so far you can also have multiple different methods like these and then you can work with that and there is one more small change over here you see that this both this method are like open method but the only thing we change in these two method is basically like the parameter you can have that in the same class file as well i mean you can have same open method in two of them in, in the same class file but with different parameters or even different data types in the parameter uh, if you have it then it is still legal in the class and we call that concept as called as method overloading 
it's not overriding but it is overloading you remember last lecture we talked about overriding uh, a method from its super class from the base class that is overriding so that is called as method overriding but overloading is another concept where you can have same method name but different signature like different parameters in it uh, in the same class file and that is called as method overloading and this is another uh, important concept that we are um, we need to understand we will be talking about that while we do a demo but at least you know you got the idea how these things can be done uh, and uh, and I think that's that's all that we have to know so far for the method. And I think we have already talked quite a lot. So let's try to use whatever knowledge that we have got and try to create uh, or work with the method and understand how things work. And this time, for the first time, we are going to see how we can return a value out from a method as well. So let's get started. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to our code that we have been writing over here. And I'm going to the um, the mock, uh, the Selenium mock driver. I'm just going to use this same functionality this time. So what I'm going to do is, um, as I told you, uh, you can return a value from a method. The reason why I don't want to get to the other functionality like access modifier that you can use with the with the method. We have already discussed that quite a lot. Also, we tried working with methods um, uh, in a, in a different fashions like static methods and non-static method. So I don't want to get into those details. Those things were just like a recap for you. So I'm going to go to our Selenium mock driver package over here. I'm going to explain you how we can work with methods. And once again, I'm not really going to talk about like static methods or different access specifier for the method. We have already talked about those things. So I'm just going to assume that you already know that. And please go ahead and watch the rest of the videos uh, before getting into this session because we have spoken about a lot of details about working with access modifiers in our earlier sessions as well. So that will give you some idea about that. Uh, but as that said, I'm going to go into our web driver class. Uh, and what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to show you the uh, method which can return a value out from this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this method. I'm going to paste it over here. So I'm going to put the same name. I'm going to do a method overloading as well at the same time. And what I'm going to do it is I'm going to um, uh, return a value, but I'm also going to pass different parameters to this particular method. And once again, this is called as method overloading, as you know. Just keep in mind that you're going to have the same names of the method, but different parameters over here. And I'm going to say uh, int uh, version, like a browser version, something like that. Um, and I'm going to pass the opening browser with version, something like that. Uh, as the browser version, something like this. And I'm going to put this uh, column there just in case for differentiation purpose. So this method is going to print this value, but I also wanted to return the concatenated browser name and version. What do you think? That's a good idea, right? So I'm going to say browser name, and then I'm going to concatenate that with a colon and then a browser version. So this is pretty much the same concatenation which I'm talking about. So I'm basically going to concatenate the browser name with a colon and then the browser version, and I'm going to return the value. So this value, they all are basically a string type because you see that I'm trying to do a concatenation of a string and an integer together and becomes an becomes a string the whole thing becomes a string because you also have a string in between. So return type is basically a string. So now it says that if I just go over here, like the, the ID is complaining that there is an error. If I scroll, it says that the void method cannot return the value. It also give me, gives me a quick fix to change the method return type to a string type. See that browser, the, the IDE is more intelligent enough to tell me what type it is. So once I change it to string type, so I click that, you see that now the return from void, it has changed to string type. So that proves the point that this method is basically a string uh, a returning method, the same name as open, which is quite cool. So now if I just go back to our first program, 
And if I wanted to do this, um, like I'm going to call the open method once again from the Chrome driver. So I'm going to say Chrome driver dot open. You see that I'm going to get two method this time, not just one method like browser name. I also get browser name with browser version. So if I'm passing that, like if I choose that, so I'm going to say Chrome and I'm going to specify the version as 104 dot uh, or 104, something like that, because it's not double. So I'm going to do that. But now the question naturally comes is, Karthik, how do I get that value which has been returned from this open method, you remember? How do I do that? Well, in order to do that, you remember the keyword var that we tried using it some time before while we were doing this um, learning before, right? In the primitive types while we were trying to get the value out. Uh, so the var types I can introduce in here. And now I can say var of the browser details. So what I essentially I'm doing is I wanted to get the written value from the open method and store that value into a variable, something like this, which is quite cool, right? Once I have it, now I can print the value as well, system.out.println. And now I'm going to say browser uh, the formatted browser detail details are um, and I can just say browser details there we go that's quite cool so hopefully that's gonna print it for me um, and now if I try to execute this code you should see things will just pan out over here you see that the formatted browser details are Chrome colon 104. Remember, this is the one that we are trying to return from that open method. If I just so guess what? I have not told you the secret. If I want to get into this method, I don't really have to go to that class web driver and then go and have a look at this open method. You can also do this in Windows machine. You can just go and click this method and do a control click. It's just going to open that method for you, something like that. You can do that as well. Like control click does those magic for you. Just control it and see that it opens the declaration, implementation, return types, and call hierarchy. You can do any of these. And by default, it's going to do an open declaration. It just it directly goes to that particular method for you. So you don't have to necessarily go into the class um, that the method is being defined, which is quite harder while your project goes bigger. So yeah, that, that's that's how you do it as well. And now you see that we have this uh, open method returns a value as well. So now we can get the value out from the method as well uh, over here, like how we define it. And the name of the method is quite exactly the same, uh, but the signature is different, meaning the parameter are different. It is of two count. You can also have a browser uh, opening with a different type. For instance, you can have an int type and you can have the same name as well. You can say that this is going to be browser version that I wanted to um, specify. So I'm going to say browser version, opening the browser, opening the browser version, something like that. So you can have it with the same name, but different type in the parameter. So this is called as method overloading in Java. And the reason why this is method overloading is because you're going to be using the same name across the same class file for a method. And once you hit the dot in any of these um, object, you are going to get, see, three method with the same signature open. So that's about the method overloading. We also saw the returns from return types from the uh, method, like how you do that. Uh, and we also saw how we can work with the static method and uh, the non-static methods. And also we, we discussed how we can perform a um, overriding of the method in our last lecture while we were trying to do an override uh, keyword attributes, something like this. So hope you got the idea of how to work with methods already.
right? So this is how we can work with uh, methods in Java. And these are one of the most foundational element and like a building blocks for you while you actually work with Java itself. And these things are going to keep you up and running uh, for a long time because these methods are something that you'll be ending up writing quite a lot while you do Selenium automation, especially with Java programming language. Once again, thank you so much for joining in today's session. We'll talk tomorrow in even further detail with the core Java concepts.